Welcome to Jedi Bricks, and today we have a 2025 LEGO Lord of the Rings leak special with an update on a future Minas Tirith and smaller potential sets and a dive into the challenges and the lore behind them. And very quickly, I am giving away a free sealed copy of the Nazgul Fell Beast gift with purchase. I'll be announcing the winner on the 31st of July, and all you have to do to enter is subscribe to the channel and comment down on this video. Let us hunt some fork. Also, if like me, you are waiting on smaller Lord of the Rings sets, then I have officially released the instructions for my Amon Hen and the death of Boromir diorama. And if you stick around till the end of the video, I'll give you a sneak peek on my latest design, the Doors of Durin at the Mines of Moria. Bagonda! Bagonda! Now stick with me for this new information, because first, I want to go over why Minas Tirith is so important and how LEGO is going to approach it. And before we get into the build, let's dive into the lore that makes Minas Tirith such a fan favourite and significant location. In Tolkien's writing, Minas Tirith is the final bastion of Gondor. Enriched by its deep links to the ancient kingdom of Numenor, and indeed the Numenorians' own ancient links to the Elves of the Second and First Ages, the lore is complicated, but Minas Tirith was built by the Dunedain, Aragorn's ancestors, after they fled to Middle-earth to escape the destruction of their island kingdom, Numenor. But there were some faithful Numenorians who fled this destruction, and they were led by Elendil and his sons Isildur and Anarion. And when they arrived in Middle-earth, they would build Minas Tirith and Minas Ithil, the Tower of the Sun and the Tower of the Moon. And when they were built, these twin cities encapsulated the final remnants of Numenor, which in turn was inspired by the elven cities of old, cities like Gondolin or kingdoms like Doriath. So true fans of Tolkien will appreciate how serious of a challenge LEGO is facing with adapting such a symbolic location as Minas Tirith into a LEGO set. And that's before we even get to the build itself, because it really needs to be at least 7,000 pieces, making it the largest LEGO Lord of the Rings set ever released. And honestly, I can see it needing to be closer to 10,000 pieces to do the scale and complexity justice. As for exactly how LEGO is going to do this, there are really four main ways that they can approach it. The first would be a huge mistake, and that is as a micro-scale version similar to the LEGO Harry Potter Hogwarts set. There are already some fantastic mock design versions, and while it's true that this would have been the easiest way to accurately capture the White City, for me, this would leave us fans very disappointed, so I'm going to skip this one. And if micro scale isn't for you either, then check out this month's huge LEGO giveaway over at the Brick News, where they're giving away a free UCS ATAT, which you could be receiving, like some of these past winners. It's an international giveaway, and there's one entry per person, but the best part is the price is the same as a car of coffee. You can find out the full details and enter for yourself down at the link in the description, but let's get back to 2025 and Lego Minas Tirith. Which brings us on to the three actual ways that they could design this set. Basing it off the Peter Jackson movies, there are two iconic sequences at Minas Tirith. We have the first battle of Return of the King, the Battle of the Pelennor Fields, and we of course have the coronation scene where we see Aragorn finally crowned as the King of Gondor. And while they could try and do it in an all-in-one set like I did originally, it would need to include over 20 minifigures and be missing key features like the Oliphants or the Witch King. And I think we all know we need to see Grond, the mighty battering ram. And Grond is actually named after the original Dark Lord of the First Age, Morgoth's huge epic mace or hammer of the underworld. And if you want to see that weapon in action, check out this epic duel with the High King of the Elves, Fingolfin, who might be my favourite elf in all of Tolkien's Legendarium. But back to the Minas Tirith build now, because this all-in-one icon set clearly does not quite work. The battle has five separate armies clashing against each other, and this could never do it justice, which got me thinking, so how could LEGO really get this right, and what would I do if I was the designer? And finally, I have the answer, and it involves multiple sets. If LEGO was to create the Defense of Minas Tirith as the large icon set, this would give us the White City in full size, along with key characters like Faramir, Denethor, Pippin in his Citadel Guard armor, Gandalf the White, and of course, a small Gondor army, let's say eight to 10 soldiers, including Citadel Guards with winged helmets, and some regular soldiers. Now, this allows Minas Tirith to be the absolute focus of the parts and the design. The city itself would be pretty much exactly an upscaled version of this mock design. 
By building a central tower similar to the Baradur design, you could then build modular repeating sections of walls connecting to the outer side of that tower. And then you could add three levels of the city rising up from those walls before finishing off the courtyard at the top as a big platform and of course having the white tree of Gondor in the center. Based on this mock design, you could really do this with around 9,000 pieces. That designer here has only had to use 4,000. But of course, this still leaves the problem that we have no orc army, no siege towers, and not a single oliphant. And this is where multiple sets come in, with a large battle playset, the attack of Minas Tirith, which could include the Hammer of the Underworld, Grond, along with an oliphant build, a pirate ship of Umbar, and a Nazgul's fell beast. As for minifigures, at the very least, we'd need to see the Witch King of Angmar, a cave troll or two, and a collection of orcs, Harad soldiers. And I also think this is the place that you include the King of the Dead, and the three hunters, Aragorn, Legolas, and Gimli. And with this, it all really starts to work, but those of you with avid ears will notice that King Theoden and his riders are completely missing, and that is because we need a Riders of Rohan battle pack, including King Theoden, Shield Maiden Erwin, Merry in Rohan armor, and a regular Rohan soldier. And all of this sounds almost perfect, but after putting it together, it became clear that three sets like this is probably never going to happen. And that's because, based on new details that I was informed today, if LEGO is able to successfully design this set, we are just going to see a single LEGO Icons The Defense of Minas Tirith set, which rules out a secondary playset or a Minas Tirith Rohan battle pack. But this new information also suggests that all of this might just be too much for LEGO to bother with, when they do have multiple other possible icon sets that would be far easier to adapt. In my last update, we covered the LEGO Icons Hobbiton that was considered for release back in 2023. It wasn't made because LEGO felt the Council of Elrond needed updating, and so they went with Rivendell. And what this means is that Hobbiton has already been considered. And when we factor in that Hobbiton is probably the most universally known location in Middle-earth, and especially the movies, this becomes even more likely, and gets even stronger when we take a look at this official LEGO Ideas submission of a 4,000-piece Hobbiton set. It is almost perfect, and if you include minifigures like Rosie Cotton, Lobelia Sackville Baggins, a proud feat or two alongside the expected fan favourites, this could really hit home. But as promised, here is a sneak preview of my latest set design, the Mines of Moria and the Doors of Durin. I used some pretty unique pieces to create that glowing blue effect on the door, including blades and a crown from this LEGO Frozen set. I'm currently trying to finish off the Watcher in the Water. Stay tuned as this should be finished in time for my next video, where we're going to break down the absolute greatest LEGO Lord of the Rings mocks of all time. But look, whatever sets do actually release in 2025, it's an exciting time to be a LEGO Lord of the Rings fan. I'll be sure to keep you guys updated. Let me know your thoughts down in those comments. And if you're new here, don't forget to subscribe for all things LEGO but make sure to keep it secret and keep it safe.